Good morning, folks. Let's quickly note a returning massive sunspot group still behind the limb, firing CMEs. Can't wait to see if she's still enormous. Meanwhile, on the Earth-facing disk, it was a relatively calm day, but back at Earth, it was a very different story. Looking at three days of solar wind, we see the jolt identified yesterday as the CME from the X-Flare four days ago, ramping telemetry across the board, and one of the best pieces of evidence of it is a four-bush decrease, a cosmic ray dropout that occurs during CME impact as the cloud of plasma surrounds Earth and temporarily acts like a second magnetosphere blocking the galactic radiation. Luckily, everything about the interplanetary shockwave impact was minor to moderate, a low-level geomagnetic storm ensued and is tapered off in the overnight hours. Like I said, calm day on the disk with no major flaring. We'll be analyzing the two larger Earth-facing sunspot groups here. The big one up north is moving around quite a bit and still Delta class despite her recent calming of activity. The incoming sunspot group, however, is perfectly spread magnetically, side to side, and therefore less likely to make big flares. The southern negative coronal hole is departing in red while a positive northern hole approaches in green. We've been eyeing that one since its far edge crested the limb into view, and now it is just about Earth-facing and already on the Earth-facing fourth of the star. According to ISWA, the force to this opening is significant, even down towards the equatorial portions. In fact, Earth is already exiting the extended negative influence into positive near-Earth space. Also note, while Venus is exiting the coronagraph frame, we now see Saturn coming in above it. This conjunction, combined with the coronal holes, was the call for our latest earthquake watch, and we are starting now. Yesterday we saw that earthquake just before the news that rang as high as 6.7 on the full readings list. Well, afterwards, a tremor just south of there hit 6 magnitude on a couple meters. Chile nearly had one as well. It's always unusual to have these quakes in Africa, and there is a small swarm developing near the Bay of Bengal. The lava flows in Hawaii picked back up, actually made it to its first home. Loss of property intensifies and may not be done yet. Right now, there is a low near the Great Lakes driving southward on the western edge, but it is also reinforced by a low to the north near the same longitude pulling from even deeper into the Arctic, and a high pressure node to the west keeping that flow tight. The eastern heat and moisture flow contrast to make the 24-hour temperature delta look like this. Pretty absurd. Compare parts of Texas to parts of Maine today. That's fun. The eastern convergence will have thunderstorms today with the snow and arctic blast coming in right behind it. It's already started with records in jeopardy in Minnesota and throughout more than half the country in the coming days. Let's also quickly take a look at our overnight lows heading into tomorrow. In Europe. The North Atlantic flow shifted a bit east towards land and stole the lion's share from the northern flow out of the Mediterranean. While flash flooding is possible anywhere in purple, the storm zones stick to the southern portions of those convergences. Down under, the Antarctic low reaches around back up to New Zealand there. We've got convergences east and west in Australia as well. And again, the storm warnings seem to follow those convergences nicely. The Mobile Observatory project is in Sulphur, Louisiana today, Chateau de Bonne Rive this afternoon. See observatoryproject.com for details and for future tour dates. Starting with a massive southern filament, we've got shots of our star to close at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.05 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.